morning, viewers, and welcome to the beginning of Lent called Ash Wednesday. With us today is a long time friend in the UK, the Chancellor of Rochester Cathedral, an Anglican and a partner in the propagation of hymns. He will give us a short and informative talk about Ash Wednesday. Please let us listen to... Good evening friends, my name is Gordon Giles and I bring you greetings from Rochester Cathedral where I am the Canon Chancellor. I've been involved with the shopping hymn episodes from the very beginning and it is good to be with you even from here in England. My good friend Lenray Delano has asked me to talk about Ash Wednesday and the hymn 40 Days and Nights. That the period from Ash Wednesday to Easter Day is 46 days never troubles us when we sing this hymn, as so many of us do on Ash Wednesday and the first Sunday of Lent. This hymn is essential to the commencement of Lent, although the 40 days and nights of the opening line are not a reference to Lent itself, but to the 40 days and nights endured by Christ in the wilderness. That's in Mark 1 verse 13. The hymn reflects the journey of Lent, beginning with Christ in the wilderness. It carries us through to the eternal Eastertide of hope and joy after self-denial and temptation. The original text bears this better than the version we have come to know, although in both we see a development of the story of Christ's temptations, verses 1 and 2, to our response of fasting, verse 3, a request for assistance in resisting temptation from him who has already done so, verse 4, to the assurance of the same angelic comfort, verse 5, to the final prayer that Christ give us faithful conviction to walk with him through the whole of life, so that we might arrive at our own judgment and be raised. The journey through Lent is thus a microcosm of the one we walk through the whole of our lives, and the reference to Eastertide at the end can be both the temporal annual feast of Easter when Lent concludes, or it can be a deeper reference to an ultimate eternal destination. The author George Smitten studied at Corpus Christi College in Cambridge, taking his BA in 1845. He was ordained in 1848 and became rector of Hawksworth in Nottinghamshire in 1850 and was there for nine years. Published in 1846, 40 Days and 40 Nights was deemed impossible for public worship by none other than John Julian, who was the author of the Dictionary of Hymnology, and it was taken up and adapted by Francis Pott five years later. The tune which is so utterly wedded to it was later attributed to Martin Herbst, having originally been thought to be by Paul Heinlein, and the tune is sometimes called Heinlein. Now, wherever we look, there are temptations of sorts. In Lent, following our Lord's magisterial example, we devote ourselves to resisting them. The inevitable futility of this aspiration is ever before us as we pray that we might not faint nor fail. Nevertheless, year by year, we know that the spiritual discipline of self-denying endeavour brings a more joyful reception of Easter hope and joy when the day comes. Let us join the Ave Maria Choir of Our Lady Queen of Nigeria Catholic Church, Ujuereba. And to be accompanied by our resident organist, Abiyodun Faludi, on this four manual organ, Allen organ, at Holy Cross Cathedral. Please listen and join us. <laughs>
So let us pray. O Lord, who for our sake didst fast forty days and forty nights, give us grace to use such abstinence, that, our flesh being subdued to the Spirit, we may ever obey thy godly motions in righteousness and true holiness, to thy honour and glory, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen.